Are you struggling to close deals? Cold outreach is wasting the time of both the buyer and seller at every stage, especially when sellers are using shallow and outdated data. Your organization can overcome these challenges with technology that translates comprehensive, high-quality buyer data into real-time insights. These deeper insights empower sales reps and teams to adopt the habits of top performers, which leads to better outcomes, like more pipeline, higher win rates, and larger deals. We call this Deep Sales, and we've built the first Deep Sales platform with the next generation of LinkedIn Sales Navigator. Right now, you can try LinkedIn Sales Navigator and get a 60-day free trial at linkedin.com slash trial. That's linkedin.com slash trial for a 60-day free trial. Let LinkedIn Sales Navigator help you sell like a superstar today. Just go to linkedin.com slash trial and get started. Hey guys, and welcome to the 25th episode of Criminality, the podcast where Rebecca and I talk about things in reality TV that sometimes have crimes and sometimes are just kind of crimes and we still talk about them. Rebecca, (laughs) wow. How are you? (laughs) That is too true. You do not tell lies. Um, I'm great. Happy New Year and Happy New Year to our listeners. Happy New Year to you and yours. Um, Yeah, you've had a great kickoff to the year, Rebecca. The ending of your year, maybe not your favorite. That's true. I guess you're right. When you compare the two, we're definitely on the up and up. The end of the year, pretty right. rough. Right. Uh, lots of sickness and just disappointments. General. Um, I'm just kind of vibing <laughs> off of what you said on the last episode, not like yeah. trying to share your personal information. No, no, but- <laughs> you're right. It was not great. And um, we rallied. We had canceled a family vacation. And when everybody was healthy and we all got negative COVID tests and the stars aligned. We rebooked a trip with like two days notice and went to the Bahamas. As a, an Enneagram six, that whole thing just (laughs) does not compute. (laughs) To be honest, as an Enneagram four, it was hard for me too, but I was outvoted by my uh, three, you know, family members. And one of them is a seven. So he was all like, let's do this. Oh yeah. 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 Um, And you know what I remembered, which is super fun, it was my the last day of our trip and our driver was driving us to the airport and right. he's like, you might be interested to know on the left is a cemetery. And I was like, weirdly, I don't think people do aren't are interested to know that I happen to be. So keep talking, sure, sure. Roosevelt. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and um, he was like, that's where Anna Nicole Smith is buried. And I had totally forgotten what a big part of that story. Yeah. Bahamas are. And you did that back, way back in like episode four four maybe was, or something yeah one of the, the really early ones mm. and I, I went back to the episode and I was like oh my gosh you talk about the Bahamas a lot it was like very important and significant to her yeah so anyway passed right by interesting I've passed by the Hard Rock Hotel where she died and also think of that connection so really you know the full this cir- is a thing. The circle's been made yeah. yeah I mean for better or for worse may she rest in peace but um also Bob Saget passed today at the oh, day recording my gosh. which is really sad yeah Eddie White last week or the week before so it's just been like so <sighs> I'm really glad your 22 is go- uh 2022 is going well because it seems <laughs> <Yeah>. like <laughs> you know really if like they come in threes too so oh we'll hear something oh, gosh. tomorrow I might have to edit oh. this part if anything goes wrong uh it's Bob big- Durst Oh, okay. Yeah. Good riddance. So we're fine with that. We're done. Yeah. (laughs) As he would say, bye-bye. (laughs) Bye-bye. But anyway, yes, we had a great trip. How how was your New Year's and and how are you? Awesome. Uh, New Year's is good. (laughs) Nothing exciting. Life is great. (laughs) As per usual. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. It's good. Great. Yeah. And I am excited this week, Rebecca, about the story that we're telling. And I'm trying to remember, my last clues were... Uh, Beverly Hills, Candy, Candy, and Grill, right? Yeah. Yeah. And you got it. I am beyond impressed, especially because you hadn't heard part of the story that had to do with one of my clues, but you still got it. Yeah. Grill threw me, but I had a strong hunch when I heard Beverly Hills and Candy. Um, Yeah. 
we're here in Beverly Hills, my favorite place to be. Mm -hmm. And I got really excited because I'm excited for this story, but I also was very excited that I guessed it finally. Yeah, I (laughs) I was quite impressed. It was awesome. So a lot of times on Criminality, we discuss celebrities that come from rags to riches. But this week, we're discussing one who sort of did this in reverse. We're discussing the daughter of a legendary producer who had all the money in the world and the girl who did everything she could to run through it. (laughs) Rebecca, who are we talking about this week? It is Her Majesty. I don't know why I gave her that <laughs> wow, title. I, I didn't even do that. <laughs> yeah, retract. Uh, Ms. Tori Spelling. You are right. Tori was born Victoria Davy Spelling to parents legendary rapper, and that's rapper with a W, Candy <laughs> Spelling, and super producer, the late Aaron Spelling. Yeah. Tori's also the sister of Randy, who we briefly discussed on a previous episode all about Sean Stewart. Yes. Remember? Yes. Yeah. Sons of Hollywood. Yeah. And so while Randy was at one point a son of Hollywood or Follywood, as of 2009, he's actually a life coach. Of course he is. <laughs> and I would do just about anything to watch Randy life coach Sean <laughs> in his 138 water. I mean, can you imagine? That show would be incredible. There you go. I mean, yes, these two have have things to tell and teach, I'm sure. Teach, yes, absolutely. <laughs> I The idea of somebody growing up in his world being a life coach. So it's like rule number one, have a rich dad. Right. Rule number two, have a, a staff who do yeah. actually most things in life. Like, right. I, I don't I think him as a life coach, he'd be one of like the most helpless people. <laughs> Yeah, so. like I think it, by the end of the class, he'd be like, do you guys have anything to offer? Because things are going so well <laughs> yes. over here. Honestly. <laughs> so the family of the Spellings was is super rich, right? Like not Real Housewives of Orange County rich. We're talking Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, Real Housewives of Dubai that's coming up rich. Yeah. And then some, right? Their home, her childhood home was 56,000 square feet. And if you're like, wow, that's big. How big is it? Rebecca, it's roughly the same size as a football field with both end zones. I don't know what an end zone is, but that sounds It's like the part where they they dance in that like (laughs) last little bit. So including those two end zones. Okay. Yes. (laughs) I was like, is that a mall? Like how big is a mall? White House. Oh my, that's just Oh, yeah. So I, I didn't get you with the football, but I got you with that part. So. <laughs> yes, you really did. That's such a statement. Like to build a home that's bigger than the White House. It is. There's 14 bedrooms, including a gift wrapping room for Candy, <sighs> who is a notorious, like, has this room that's just for wrapping gifts, which doesn't I'm jealous sound of amazing. That. Mm-hmm. Yes, I wrap on my bed on our small kitchen table and you can't like i never keep that much wrapping paper on hand because i'm like i have to store it somewhere right and i would if i had a room i'd also have like a room and dispenser yeah exactly and then they also have a bowling alley and a barber shop where i guess you can get haircuts like this um (laughs) (laughs) and also a spot for 100 cars which is literally just like a traffic jam why would you need that ever i wonder if somewhere underground like a parking lot yeah, I didn't look that far. I got kind of I just like can't. hung up on the White House part of it all. <laughs> it's just so bizarre. It, I mean, to be a home, like this is a home. It, it just blows my mind. So yeah. Aaron, her father, is worth, he was worth over $500 billion, a million dollars. I saw $600 million sometimes. I, I mean, just beyond rich. And he was also the producer of such shows like The Love Boat, Charlie's Angels, Dynasty, Melrose Place, Seventh Heaven, which I didn't realize, and Beverly Hills, 90210. Iconic. And that last one would be the one that really changes Tori's life. I mean, besides like all the money, you know, the others produced, but the one that would define her acting career was the one that came out in 1990, Beverly Hills, 90210. Rebecca, what is your relationship to 90210? Complicated. Complicated. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. I was too young when it came out. Okay. And I I have distinct memories of watching it in one of in my like best friend's house and we were sneaking it. Like we exactly. were definitely not supposed to watch it. And her TV was like very high up and it was in a built-in thing. Anyway, it was very hard to be sneaky about it, but um, but man, did we try. And I remember her saying, You have to watch the show. It's called Beverly Hills 90210. And I assumed it was a cop show. It sounded like 
I'd never seen Beverly, Beverly Hills Hillbillies Cop- oh. or Beverly Hills Cop or any of those. It just felt like a zip code. Just, I don't know. I thought it was like, it reminded me of cops with my dad. And then it was this right. juicy teenager in quotations. Oh, this is where it started <laughs> for you. <laughs> yeah. Yes, exactly. And I was just like a little fly on the wall, like sucking it all up. I loved it. I loved it. Oh, that's so great. That's kind of my way of uh, my memories of Dawson's Creek, because this mm. was still a little older for me. But Dawson's Creek was the same thing. So a little old, a bit older yep. and sneaking around and watching it at a friend's yeah. house. However, you can get this dirty show in your life is what you were yes. doing. Um, but yes. I didn't quite fall in your ways of young adult. Um, actually, I kind of did. I think I'm watching Yellow Jackets all the time and thinking of fan theories and all this stuff. And it was like straight up an orgy this week on the show. And I'm still like, watching it like where's Rebecca here for it yeah I actually started Yellow Jacket I got interrupted and I, I can't wait to go back to it I like it yeah it, it it's it's it seems right up your alley for several yeah. reasons that big I one do I'm enjoying it yeah it's fun so uh, everything really changed for Tori after she's on 90210 um she's everywhere and the world wants to know all about her life and she was really quick to share and some say Overshare, which I appreciate. I'm not doing it, but I appreciate if you do. Although I did just say a lot of things about watching <laughs> Yellow Jacket. So be that as it may. <laughs> so after 90210, Tori continues to get work, but she doesn't get a whole lot. She has small roles, including a spot in Glitter, the TV show, not the Mariah Carey classic. Um, and she even started a movie that now has a reboot. And that movie is Scream. Mother, may I sleep with danger? Oh. You remember the Lifetime movie? Wait, are you getting her confused? (laughs) This is not Drew Barrymore. (laughs) She was giving me such scream vibes right there. And we're hearing about scream all the time now. (laughs) Drew Barrymore, my sincere apologies. How dare you? That's not fair because she was, I mean, not not fair to you, because she was in the um, spoof of that scary movie, right? She was That's in one of the That's what I'm scary thinking. Movies. That's why I think I was having, it was like a synapse and disconnect uh-huh. um, that was all happening. But no, I, I am unaware of the Lifetime Mother film sleep with danger? of which you speak. Oh my gosh. <laughs> now this is a movie that defined my childhood. It's horrific. It's so bad. But for whatever reason, it became like this cult hit, so much so that it got a reboot with James Franco where vampires are brought in and it's still called Mother May I Sleep With Danger, but James Franco's behind it. She's also in it and vampires are on. Oh my gosh. Does she play her self grown up or a different role? I think so. I think I did not watch this. I'm so sorry. I did not put the time in for this, but she, I think she plays the mom. And so now her daughter's asking her mother, may, may I, I please sleep danger? Sleep yeah. with danger. Wow. Yeah. Um, I'll have to go back to the archives for that one. I think you're good. I think, uh, <laughs> I think that was enough that we just put you through um, <laughs> from our oh, screen to funny. scary movie. That was awesome. <laughs> but as you can see, thespian, right? She really can do it all. So as the years go by, Tori really is starring in, you know, made for TV movies, but that's about the extent of her acting career. So you see her pop up in these lifetime things, but she's still in the public eye. She's still Tori Spelling. So in 2004, she marries this guy. He's a writer and actor named Charlie Shannon. I'm hoping I'm saying his name right or Shannon. He said that he and Tori really grew up in two different worlds. It's Totally opposite, but he really cared about her and wanted to start a life together with her. So the two have this huge wedding, which Aaron and Candy footed the bill for, obviously. So about his time meeting with Aaron and Candy and like learning, learning about them, meeting them, he said, quote, he liked to talk about his glory days a little too much. She liked to cast an icy glare and pretend how to forget to pronounce my name. Crap, I'm Candy Spelling in this scenario. I did not get his name right. But they're real salt of the earth people. They're kind of like (laughs) what you think, like this is your daughter's fiance and you don't know how to pronounce his name. Yeah. If my daughter gets engaged and I don't do that, then, then, you know, you can shade me. But for now, sorry, Charlie, literally. (laughs) (laughs) So about 15 months into their marriage, uh, Tori was away filming this new movie of the week called Mind Over Murder. Have you heard of that one? I have. Oh, you have? Well, if it's the one where a lot of her life changes on set, maybe oh, it's yeah, a different yeah. one. Mm-hmm. No, no, okay. no, that's the one. That's the one. Yeah. Um, okay. I'm like, how did you hear about that? And not mother may I sleep with danger. <laughs> or yeah. So anyway, 
It's also more on brand, I would say. Like, true, true, true. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure they both had murder in there. Um, and possibly teenagers. I don't know. Oh, um, well, then there you go. Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe I missed it. I need to. I, we got to get the, that off of being like a thing for you. It's <laughs> my own fault. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, that's true. Okay. So <laughs> after this time she's been married, she comes home. Charlie says, you know, they've been married for a little over a year. He gets an email from Tori saying, I need you to meet me at my therapist's office. So he goes to the therapist, sits down, Tori spelling, zipped her lips. She's not saying anything. And the therapist literally says to Charlie, uh, Tori's not happy when she's alone with you. She doesn't want to have your kids. And she only married you because you loved her and took care of her, which kind of seems like a pretty good mm-hmm. idea, right? Like, that's like a pretty good reason to marry somebody because they love you. Right. Also, quote, She had purposefully shown me only 10% of her true personality. And oh yeah, while in Canada, she cheated on me with her latest Lifetime movie co-star, end quote. Yeah. So he said after hearing this, though, with no prompting, Tori chimes in and says, quote, I hate it when you sing in the car, end quote. Can you imagine being like, I got to add something else after saying I cheated on you? Like, by the way, also you sing in the car. I mean, that, that it's like, it's like she couldn't not say it. That was like a burning desire. That is, that is weird. Isn't it? But also the 10%, like I only let you know 10% of myself. I just, I don't get, I don't get saying that. I don't get why you would marry somebody if you were only 10%. Just a lot of it doesn't track for me. Yeah. Well, she probably feels like she met someone else that like tapped into this other part of her. And so it made her make that comparison. She might not have even known that that was happening and whatever. Totally. This whole way of breaking up is so bizarre. It is very bizarre. And it and it feels very on brand what you're saying. Like, I kind of think that became their whole brand. And so she says, you know, she's done with this. She's leaving him. But she's actually already moving in with her co-star, Canada's own Dean McDermott. Mm-hmm. Had you heard of Dean McDermott before these two? Mm-mm. Okay. No. I don't think anyone in America had. They are basically Dean McDermott and his new girlfriend, uh, Tori Spelling, are basically the OG Leanne Rimes and Eddie Cibrian, right? Totally. And that they both film forgettable movies that led to the destruction of their families. Exactly. Something. That we got to watch play out. On multiple shows. Yeah, tangentially on like other reality shows, which is kind of awesome. I know. I mean, I'll never forget Vanderpump Rules. No, not Vanderpump Rules. Beverly no. Hills. But remember oh, Real Sheena Housewives was Beverly Hills? Yes, Sheena serving. was on there. Yes, mm-hmm. yeah. yes. I'm thinking it's Vanderpump, but you're right, you're right, you're right. It was Beverly Hills. It was even before that. I think that's how we got Vanderpump Rules. So thank it you. It is. Yes, thank you, Sheena. Sheena Shea, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Man, I do love her name together saying, Oh, I know. I can't not. I know. Mm -mm. (laughs) It's like very Jin Shaw to me. Like they just go together. You have have to to say say both together. And Lisa Barlow. There's a few. Yes, there you go. (laughs) So, according to Tori, though, she meets Dean. You know, she's married. He's married. They they are filming this movie together, but they are in love, Rebecca. Nothing can stop this. This is earth shattering young adult literature kind of love. And, uh, <laughs> but in, kind. Yeah, but, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm like going in on you. None of that's written, <laughs> but I'm enjoying it too much, but they are the kind of couple who gets tattoos of each other's face or, you know, at least one of them does. It seems as though like this new love, Tori and Dean, Candy and Aaron for whatever they felt about Charlie, which didn't seem like they didn't like the guy, but it didn't seem like they were, you know super impressed or whatever. Um, But they're not thrilled with this. They literally paid for this extravagant wedding for Tori and gift wrapping rooms are not going to pay for themselves. So it's said that they're really just not happy with this. And it caused a bit of an estrangement between Tori and her parents whenever she leaves Charlie for Dean. And it's such a public big thing. Yeah. In April of 2006, though, Tori stars in a semi-autobiographical comedy called So Notorious. Yes. Now, it aired on what channel, Rebecca? We need to just have a segment called What Channel? Yeah, we do have one. We just have to yeah, technically make it, make it a thing. We don't have music. E? No, it was actually on VH1. I, that was my next I should have given you more clues. That was I'm my sorry. next guess. I, That's okay. That's I've okay. got another one for you to guess, too. That's okay. 
Okay, so VH1, according to Amazon's description on this, now if you want to talk generous, let's talk about this one. <laughs> Quote, through miserable dates, disastrous parties, and career setbacks, so notorious, is nearly as cringeworthy as Curb Your Enthusiasm, although unlike the irascible Larry David, our heart goes out to the hapless Tory, as she is to somehow right the ship of public perception of her as a spoiled Beverly Hills princess who has had everything handed to her, end quote. I take complete umbrage mm. to the fact that they compared this to Curb Your Enthusiasm. That was bold. That was like really <laughs> super bold. Yeah. Um, did you ever watch this show? I think I did, but she's had so many versions of shows that feel similar. I can't be certain it was so notorious and not one of the other latter ones, but um, right. I don't know. I might know more as you talk about it, but I, I kind of can't not watch her if I see oh, her on a show. It's weird. I know. Um, I will tell you, I watched every episode of this show. I remember one where she like was laying out and stood up and the paparazzi took a picture of her legs that looked like cellulite, but it was actually a chair that made those. Why does that live rent free in my brain? I don't know, but I very much remember that. Yeah. I actually enjoyed the show. I actually thought she, it was kind of a fun, poking fun of herself. Yeah. I thought that was a very good vein for her, really. Um, but alas, like Tori's first marriage, this wouldn't last very long. And after 10 episodes, the show is canceled. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, it did not last long. So, and that's really all there is to say about that, to be quite honest. There just wasn't a lot going on with it. So the next month, May of 2006, fresh off her divorce and Dean's divorce, uh, the couple married in Fiji. Do you remember these pictures? Yes. There are a lot. So for this wedding, they are the only two in attendance um, because they couldn't wait another day to marry each other. Slash people were probably not too thrilled about <laughs> buying them a second toaster in two years. So just a month later, though, Tori's beloved father, Aaron Spelling, would die at the age of 83. And Tori was devastated. And people quickly wondered, though, how much money, you know, these kids were going to inherit. It's just her and her brother, Randy. Do you know out of his $500 million how much it was that he got or they got? I believe it was somewhere like six to 800,000. Good job. It's something like after that. After taxes, 800,000 is about what yeah. they, um, they received. And so, which is shocking because we're talking, oh gosh, please don't make me do the math, but like 0.2%. That's a minutia percentage. Yeah. Minutia yeah. is the mathematical term. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> equals MC squared. Let's keep going. Okay, yeah. let's see. <laughs> but just a few months after her dad had passed away, Tori was in love. Uh, that's love with two ends. She and Dean ne needed really good yes. PR, and their love was just so strong, they needed to shove it down our throats to, you know, really just drive in how much they love each other. So this, this show that they end up pitching and apparently gets picked up is called Tori and Dean in Love, I-N-N. Mm -hmm. And it followed the couple as newlyweds as they updated and ran a bed and breakfast. Now, Rebecca, what channel was this one on? Oh, shoot. This one? You've got this one. So it's not VH1 or E? Nope. Okay. Um, Lifetime? No. I watched it. E? No. Shoot. Another Style? No. O. Yes. Own. O. Yes, it was the O <laughs> oxygen, one of those. Yes. Good job. Is it, is it O or own? I don't know. I don't remember which own. one it was first. It was own first, right? And then it became oxygen. I thought so. Yeah, it was Oprah Winfrey Network, then oxygen. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then it was oxygen rebranded entirely to true crime. But okay, yeah. that's where it was. Okay. Got it. Some this may say that this one could have been a crime as well. Um, <laughs> yeah. So really, and also we can blame Oprah for this whole thing um, if we're really getting down to it, but I won't blame Oprah because she's for anything. blameless in this. No. So Tori and Dean in Love ran from 2007 to 2012, which actually oh, was more recent than I thought, run. right? Yeah. yeah. Different iterations of it, really. So the couple run this bed and breakfast called Chateau LaRue, named after one of Tori's dogs, not after a cheater brand of LuLaRoe, <laughs> <laughs> which every time it, like I have to read it so carefully to say it right. And by ran, I mean, well, you can see exactly what I mean after we take a quick break to hear a word from this week's sponsors. So before the break, we were talking about Tori and Dean and their show, Tori and Dean in Love, and how Oprah briefly tried to ruin all of our lives with it, but we've forgiven her and we've moved on. 
So Chateau LaRue is where we really get to know Tori, or at least the Tori that she kind of wants out there um, in the press at the time. So she's pregnant with her oldest son, Liam, at the time. P.S. Around the same time I was having my daughter, and if she was a boy, there is a chance she would have been named Liam because this oh. name got shoved down my throat so much. I really liked it. I still like yeah, the name. Yeah, I still do too. Yeah. Yeah, but it would have. I would have had to tell my son, I named you because I heard you on a... <laughs> What a legacy. An Oprah run network. That's what I would say. <laughs> just an Oprah run network. So, <laughs> so she's still, though, dealing with this fallout of her affair with Dean, um, but really trying to put this positive spin on things, even though Dean's ex-wife is an actress in Canada, and she talks to several media outlets about this whole thing and is like, yeah, I didn't know this was happening. This was awful. But here's where more controversy starts. While we know reality isn't totally real, it seems as though Chateau LaRue was really quite a mirage. On the show, we see them signing a deed, uh, purchasing it, renovating it, all of this. But all the records that are... Have you ever had that moment when you're leaving the house and you wonder, did I lock the door? Or worse yet, you start spiraling and you imagine all the what ifs. I used to feel that way all the time, but it wasn't until a few years ago when I heard about a break-in just a few blocks away that I realized I needed to really step up my home security game. And now I can spiral about the what-ifs on things that don't matter, like reality stars, instead of the what-ifs of home security. We've had Simply Safe protecting our house for the last few years now, and it's a total game changer. With Simply Safe's fast protect monitoring, I know within five seconds if something's actually up and the lifeguards can actually speak to intruders to stop them. That's faster than a reality TV star can throw a drink. One of the things I really love the most is you're not locked into some over the top 90 day fiance level contract drama. Simply Safe is actually affordable as well, less than a dollar a day with no hidden fees, so it's easy to love. It's no wonder they've been named Best Home Security Systems by U.S. News and World Report for five years running. Whether you want to install it yourself, it really takes less than an hour, or have a professional handle it, Simply Safe is as easy as flipping channels between Chimp Crazy and the Secret Lives of Mormon Wives. So why wait for the drama to happen? Get Simply Safe and know your home is covered just like I did. Protect your home with 50% off a new Simply Safe system plus a free indoor security camera when you sign up for Fast Protect monitoring. Just visit simplysafe.com slash criminality. That's simplysafe.com slash criminality. There's no safe like Simply Safe. Okay, it's time to commit. 2024 is the year for prioritizing yourself. Begin your new smile journey with Byte, and you could start seeing results in just two to three weeks. Just order your at-home impression kit today for only $14.95 at Byte.com. Bite Clear Aligners are doctor directed and delivered to your door. Treatment costs thousands less than braces. Plus, they offer financing options, accept eligible insurance, and you can pay with your HSA, FSA. Get 80% off your impression kit when you use code WONDERY at Bite.com. That's B Y T E.com. Start your confidence journey today with Bite. Out there, show that someone else entirely owned this. Like they were never owners, they were never running it. Which isn't too surprising that they weren't running it, but they did like there was video, at least I don't remember this specifically, but um, I read about it of them like signing over, like purchasing this, like everything was said that they were purchasing it. Right. Right. And I recall that being part of the narrative, too, is like we got so little money from uh, the inheritance. Right. This is an investment. Like we're trying to grow this money as mm -hmm. a family for our future and our children. And so. I kind of did buy into the fact that like maybe they invested it into this property, which I think was in Malibu. So it seemed like a reasonable. Right. All of it made investment. made enough sense. And the way, yeah. unfortunately, she kind of spends money, as you'll see, it seemed like she might think this project halfway through, but not realize, sure, like, oh, sure, I've got to sure. run this now. Right. Um, and maybe it's not as lucrative as you think. But I remember looking up like prices for that place because I was like, I would love to stay there. That just sounds like the coolest thing in the entire Magical. world. Being yeah. like totally knocked up and nowhere to go. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so that's kind of like a big shocker. I mean, it was a shock to me, shock to you. But this show was really a win for the couple. This would spawn several more reality shows. And this newfound notoriety even got Tori a few book deals. Oh, yeah. Rebecca, you're a reader. So I'm going to give you some book titles. And I want you to tell me which of these either you read or you think I read. Here they go. Storytelling. Mommywood. Spelling it like it is. And Uncharted Tara Tori. Okay. I 
definitely read Mommy Wood. Yes. I think you read the first one. I read all of them. I read. I was going to say all of them, them, but I thought it would be an insult. I honestly did. I was like, that's just like rude. Like why, who would read all four of Tori Spelling's books? But I was like, it's also kind of amazing. And I also didn't hate the book. It wasn't kind of amazing. You read one and you bailed. And I literally asked my library to purchase one of the books. So I can read it again. There's no audio books. Here's what I'm going to say. I respect and applaud her title work. I do. Yeah, I, I mean, love a play she's on good. words. She's put Tori into every version of a word and phrase that you could, and I commend it. It. I mean, she has branded herself amazingly with yes. this, right? Like that is, yes. y- you know, immediately that's one of her her books, right? I'm so happy you're doing this episode. I mean, who but you could do this episode? You've read all four okay. of her flipping books. Okay. <laughs> she actually has more, and I haven't read those. There's like a book about kids and stuff like that. I just wanted to leave the four I had. I think there's only one more and I considered getting it. (laughs) Note to, no, I'm going to put that in my gift wrap room to wrap you for your birthday. (laughs) Be better. Be better, Melissa. (laughs) Okay. So I was committed really to her story, if you will. So we have Tori and Dean in love. Then the spinoff of this is Tori and Dean Home Sweet Hollywood, which I believe is the season... For no reason at all, we get this song. And this is the one clip I have this week, Rebecca. But this is so good. It is Brett Michaels in a bald wig acting opposite Martin Sheen levels of cringy. And I can't wait to share it with you. I'm so ready. But I just couldn't live without you But I wouldn't want to live without you We could plant a seed and watch it grow Plant it too But I just couldn't live without you No, I wouldn't want to be without you Yeah, you You make me Love you, babe. Love you, babe. Healthy egos. <laughs> I mean, who? Who? If you aren't actually a singer, uh-huh. attempts mm-hmm. to dress like mm-hmm. and appear to be the most iconic singing duos of all time, but use your own voice. <laughs> like Nary an auto-tune to be found. Oh, wow. And... I'm sorry, I don't know what year that was, but there are ways to like bump up vocals. Like that was as good as they could get it in post. And it was not good. That was a choice. And that is a song I hear in my head so often. I sing that song. I knew every word of the song before I played it, like whenever I was looking for this. Did I block this out? Have I seen this and literally don't remember? They played it at the end of one of the episodes of one of the shows possibly okay. talked about it in the book. I cannot remember. I don't know everything, just mostly everything about her. Um, it is such an upsetting thing. So if you are just listening to this, Rebecca, who who were they attempting to be? Who were they dressing as in this? Okay, so I recall um, Johnny Cash and Johnny and June. Yes, Johnny and June. Um, uh, Kurt Cobain and Courtney Love. Love, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sunny and Cher. Sure. Lucy and Ricardo? Or, yeah, wait, Ricky? Lucy and yeah. Ricky, yeah. So people were pissed this year that, that Nicole Kidman was going to be Lucy. Did they not ever see this? That is just <laughs> yeah. offensive like you wouldn't believe. I think, you know, I think she really believes in her acting ability because uh-huh. she's like from TV lineage. And so while I agree with you that I've always found her like very watchable right, and somewhat like redemptive in her show, like there's just still like outrageous and silly and like sure. kind of crazy and out of touch. 
it's when she's acting that I absolutely cringe and kind of can't deal with her. And it's so clear that you you do something like that if you think you're like able to kind of embody those people. And like, I, I think it was like a calling card. I think it was the two of them being like, we're actors. We're going to get we're going to get right. stuff from look at, this. Like, look at our range. Exactly. And it's so thirsty. It's I, I just I can't. <laughs> It was thirsty before we knew what thirsty was. Exactly. It was very desperate. <laughs> That's dehydrated. That is dehydrated. <laughs> yes. yes. Oh, oh I'm man. so glad I got to share that. That was Me so too. That was terrific. Fun. And thank you, because now I will be singing it. Oh, yeah. I sang the whole thing while you were listening to it. <laughs> Giggle. So, yeah. there. You, oh, that's the worst part. That was, and there was that thing that goes, love you, babe. Love you, babe. <laughs> that would that was played on the end of one of their shows because I also hear that in my head all the time. Do I need a Tory Spelling lobotomy? <laughs> you have a steel trap brain. I, for me, it's a sieve. It just goes through and out, through and out. I mean, I know who the winner in that scenario is. It ain't me. Yeah. This is what I have to show my kids. This is horrific. Okay, so. <laughs> Around this time, though, like we're seeing them in all these shows. They're making music videos. You know, love is amazing. It's just the best. Their love is better than anybody's love ever. But we're starting to see cracks in the foundation, right? On Mm -hmm. their show, they're starting to talk about financial troubles, like you were alluding to with like them buying this, uh, buying this chateau and all this stuff. And on the show, we're seeing that Tori really has a taste for expensive things like very expensive things, which sure, who doesn't? But unfortunately, while reality TV can be lucrative, it can also pigeonhole you. So while Tori and Dean have these incomes from these TV shows, this isn't the Jersey Shore. And Tori isn't really getting any acting work. I mean, I don't know how many people saw her music video. Maybe that could have helped things. (laughs) (laughs) For sure. Um, Yeah, uh, of course. And so While they continue to expand their family, they end up having five kids, and Dean has one, but their income starts to dwindle. Tori said in various interviews, you know, she grew up in the lap of luxury and didn't really know any better. She's, like, shared the story where on Christmas Day, it's, like, 80 degrees in California, her dad has brought snow. So she has snow in her backyard at Christmas and doesn't realize that that's not a normal thing, Um, which that can really affect your way of thinking if that's all you've ever known is is this kind of a life I always think about that with Bethany and Bryn like I do Mm -hmm. think I saw you made a post today um uh maybe an Instagram story with Bethany and all the charity work she does which is great which is so good for especially for Bryn to see it but I don't it doesn't sound like Tori saw that side of things so she only sees the excess and the gift wrapping rooms and the hundred car lot or whatever it is so it's a lot over the top celebrations oh my gosh and that's what she always did on these shows and that was something that was fascinating right like she fun to watch yes she does a great job putting those things together i will say Mm -hmm. that she it it was always incredible i love to see what she was able to do but she never really learned how to budget because she never really had to Exactly. But on these shows, like you were saying, she has these huge parties for her kids, for her pigs, just like everything. Everybody had a party. And everything was over the top. So with the births of her children, though, um, Candy and Aaron, as I said before, they were kind of estranged a little bit from Tori. But once uh, Tori started having kids, that was like another focal point on the show is her relationship with her mom. And so kind of went back and forth. Like it seems like they were in a good spot, then they wouldn't be, mm-hmm. then they would But her mom actually is someone who has helped her throughout some of her financial issues. According to a TMZ article way back in January of 2016, Candy said she's helping them with food and housing and the kids schooling, but she wasn't going to help with unpaid, like frivolous things. And what she's referring to is in that same month in January, Tori was sued by American Express for $39,000 in unpaid uh, charges that she had. I guess she had made a payment and it didn't go through and just, it wasn't good. So Candy was basically like, yeah, I will support my grandkids and help them, but I'm not paying for all of that, which totally makes reasonable. sense, right? Mm-hmm. But that is also on top of the $259,000 in state taxes that the couple owed back in 2014. Suffice to say, the couple needs money. And so while Tori and Dean no longer had their joint shows, like they ran for a while, they even had a wedding show called Tori and Dean Story Book Weddings, uh, where Tori and Dean would like zhuzh up these weddings. 
this show ran for, I think, 10 episodes, nine episodes, but had its own issues. They were sued for $60 million. Did you ever hear about this? No. There's this other group that tried to sell this show to Oxygen, but Oxygen ultimately passed. It was called, I think, Wedding Rescue. Same kind of idea, right? And so eventually they see this Tori and Dean storybook wedding and are like, hey, I already tried to get you to buy that and you didn't do it. So they go to sue them. Eventually, like so many of these things, it settles out of court for an undisclosed amount. But I can guarantee freaking to you, those two never paid $60 million or $60 million anything to these people, right? Were they responsible or was the network? They were sued because they were producers on it. But I think oh, it was like got the it. whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. But around this time, the couple's personal life also takes a hit. So Dean is in Canada, loves being in Canada, where he's taken a job on Chopped Canada. He is a host. And this is kind of a dream job for him, right? It's the first job we really see him having that isn't Tori and Dean. It's Dean. And it's like a cooking show, which he really talked about his love of all things culinary and blah, blah, blah. So Dean was traveling to Canada back home, you know, throughout this time, but Dean ended up meeting a woman there named Emily. Shortly after the world and Tori all find out that he has what he calls an alcohol induced affair with this woman. So there's a lot of controversy though surrounding this affair. Do you remember this, like this whole, yeah. Some people even said this woman never existed. There's no social media accounts with her. There's no pictures. There is nothing to show that she, like, even if you look up her name, there's just nothing. And I understand it sounds crazy that there's nothing to find on this lady, but but does it sound as crazy as filming a reality show about your husband having an affair in Canada while filming Chopped Canada? Up? Because that's exactly what ended up happening. On top of, you know, this affair, she has this new show that she brings out called True Tory. Mm -hmm. I I mean, that this. one annoys me. I have to be honest. Yeah. The <laughs> title on that one. Well, she was at the end of the possibilities. Yeah, she's like, I mean, fine. <laughs> lose what do you the want S, from me? Call it True Tory. For, I know. Swap out the Y. Exactly. So that's basically what this show was, right? It was the, that. all about the fallout of their divorce. So you see a different side of them in general. I actually don't think either of them came off looking too great on this show. It went two seasons. I think there might, there was going to be a third, but Dean wasn't even going to be on it. Like, mm. I don't know if he figured out like, hey, this probably isn't great to bring all of our marriage troubles with five children out for, you know, people like me who's just eating junk food and halfway watching it. Um, but they decided not to. The thing with this show, though, is it was kind of like they needed money and people were interested. So that's they kind of went where the money was. But that is where I've read a few things. And I remember when this first happened, people reading things, whether true or not, that said maybe this lady didn't exist. And this whole mm. thing was done, which is unbelievable to think of, but not out of the realm of possibility in this world. Right. Yeah, that's disturbing. And um, if true, like much sadder than yeah. even the reality, if it did happen, that if I they know. concocted this together for like a, a, a lifeline financially in a TV show. Ugh. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's very rough. So after True Tory, things kind of never really seem the same for the t couple. They're not the same couple we saw on, um, on Tory and Dean in Love and making that beautiful piece of art music video or this <laughs> tattoo or anything like that kind of all a little bit weird and it seemed estranged after this. So Dean eventually quits Chopped Canada after hosting for two years, moves back to Beverly Hills, and things were kind of just going as they were, still having financial troubles. Nobody's getting a lot of work, but they were just kind of working through it. So then in April of 2015, um, the McDermott family went to go have a family dinner for Easter and they had that dinner at Benihana. So this story takes place at the Benihana restaurant, which is one of my favorite episodes of The Office. So that's the screen I'm going with for now to get Love rid it. of uh, Dean's bicep. <laughs> so after this dinner, this family dinner they have, Tori falls back, goes to catch herself at Benihana where, you know, they have all these grill things like that are behind me. Her arm goes back. She falls on it, burns her arm. And what? yeah, she like catches herself on there, right? 
So I read two different versions of this. I've read two different versions. One where she's out with her family. Now, this is the story you've never heard, right? You've never, never heard, heard this. this. Rebecca. One version is she's at Benihana, eating dinner, she falls, she leaves, she calls the doctor the next day and finds out this is not really good. This burn is pretty bad. And the other version is that she walks in, doesn't eat dinner, falls on the Benihana grill, screams, leaves. I know which one sounds more like a Tory Spelling story, but I will leave that decision up to you guys. But according to Benihana, they said her injuries were due to her failure to, quote, this is tough, tough to hear, conduct herself as a reasonable guest. Oh, boy. Yeah. <laughs> if you had Benihana being a messy beach on your bingo card, go ahead and mark that one off for 2022. Ooh. Yeah. And so either way, though, because there are these two different versions of the story, this burn, however she got it, was pretty serious. She ended up oh, having third degree burns, and it was serious enough to have to get skin graft surgery. Oh, wow. And I'm saving you the pictures. Like the ones I saw weren't terrible, but you can see it. And sometimes visualizing things <laughs> makes me sick. So I don't want to do that to you. <laughs> <laughs> Take your word for it. Thank you. And so while we don't know, you know, obviously she goes on to sue them. She's like, I burned myself in your restaurant and doesn't matter what was happening. And there's a lot of different stories, but uh, mommy needs some money. Uh, this is going <laughs> to cost some money to do. So she sues Benihana. And while we don't know how much the settlement actually is, because we never know in these kind of things, we do know that the state of California was like, not on my watch, Biatch, and said, hey, she still owes us money from state taxes. Ooh. So Benihana, if you want to pay her, go ahead and slide that check over to us. She owes us $338,000. So she might not have even seen that money. Oh my gosh. Because of her whole, and because of her celebrity, right? This story's out so in the media. So high profile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then, the, yeah, they find out about it and they're like, perfect, this will be how we get paid from her. You're like foiled if that was the plan to like get some liquid cash. Ooh. Ew. Yeah, that is that is quite a terrible uh plan. But that's where the grill comes in the story. Yes, Never that heard that. That it. is crazy. It was one of those things when I read it, I was like, huh. <laughs> like this is just <laughs> I've gone to those things. It's and- so very ordinary. Yeah, like because we've all been to a Benihana. Never right. seen anyone get too close to the fire but no even like small children you like right keep them people know how to but yeah it's so weird it's so it is, weird it's interesting so since then the family mcdermott has stayed pretty quiet and i mean quiet by tory spelling standards there's been lots of uh fighting with dean and we see it kind of all in the media and of course we've seen tory in a billion things like a TV show that she produced with Jenny Garth called Mystery Girls, which was on for one season. I was actually excited for her for this because it was an acting thing. She was producing it. It paired her with Jenny Garth, her friend and co-star. Yeah, it seems like it could be fun. Didn't watch it. So Mm -hmm. maybe other people felt the same way I did. Um, Then, of course, the reboot of Beverly Hills 90210, which I think she was a recurring character on. I don't know. I know she was involved. There's no way you can reboot that and be like, we won't have Aaron Spelling's daughter on this. Yeah, no, I'm sure that was written into something very long ago. For for sure. And of course, she's been on a bunch of reality stuff as well, yeah. including Craft Wars, which feels mm-hmm. like a version of uh, making it. Or what? what's the one with uh, Amy Poehler and Nick Offerman? Oh, yeah. My mom loves that show. It's so fun. Like Nail, I nailed nail it? Know. Nailed it? Making it? No. I feel like um, it's making it. That sounds right. Yeah. Yeah. Something like that. Um, But that's a fun one. Um, And so she did Craft Wars, which kind of feels like a version of that. And she was recently the unicorn on The Masked Singer, which do you remember a time in life where we didn't have to mention The Masked Singer in every freaking episode? There, Everybody's been on The Masked Singer. The unicorn. And she says something like so crazy at the end of it where she's like, I just never thought I'd have the opportunity to do this. And I've always wanted to sing. And I want to be like, roll that beautiful bean footage. You've done it before. And it was terrible. This is what I'm talking about. It's like she really doesn't have a grasp on her limitations, (laughs) which is probably why she's still fighting and like making it at at any level because she doesn't. I mean, it's kind of amazing. Uh Uh-huh. (laughs) <laughs> it's delusional, but amazing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, no, I, I 
Yeah, this time she had auto tune, so that really helped her. She yeah, no, I'm sure rounds. they. I'm sure the network, like, yeah, didn't. Make yeah, love that she was a unicorn. You know, she picked that. Like, that's very on brand. Very, yeah, mm-hmm, totally. Yeah. So, but don't fear though. Tori is never very far from the tabloids. Truly. So in 2021, there were tons of articles about the state of Tori and Dean's marriage. Yes. They basically, right? They seem to like live different lives and. She was on, I think, Jeff, uh, flipping out Jeff Lewis. Lewis thing. She was on his podcast and was like, he was like, hey, how are things going in your marriage? Are you guys sleeping in the same room anymore? She's like, no, the kids sleep with me. He sleeps in the other room. It's fine. Things are fine. Everything's fine. But it doesn't really seem like everything's mm. fine. And mm-hmm. now they're doing a lot of the like, we're not commenting on this and why do you care about our marriage? Yeah. <laughs> I honestly thought when I picked this, there would be a chance that they would have already filed by, for divorce by this week. Yeah. Just because it's it's kind of gotten, seems to have gotten worse. Also, why do we care? Because you've trained us to for like a decade. <laughs> Thank you. Whenever people are like, watch all of our reality shows about how in love we are. And then why are you guys How dare you ask? Why do you want to know? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So come obnoxious. on. You, yeah, you've, you've gotten us there. And I kid you not, Rebecca, you could Google Tori Spelling, whatever day anyone's listening to this, you will find at least four articles in the last 24 hours about her, like very Mm. specific to just her personal life. Mm. I'm not saying that she sells stories to the paparazzi, but I'm also not saying that she's not, not spelling them to the paparazzi. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. Yeah. So currently, though, she has a new show. I don't know if you're aware of this. This links all the way back to our second episode. And this episode, this show she's on is called Messiness. Have you heard about this with Snooki? I just gave you a lot of information and changed screens for you to take this in. Too much. I'm sorry. Haven't heard of the show, but I remember this picture surfacing a few and people ago, saying, months. commenting on her look. Is that right. her? Sorry, that I'm that looking at. That is her. Yeah. On your you're right at, shoulder. Right. So this is Tori and this is Chloe Kardashian. That is, that is mind blowing. I mean, it is, it's hard to see where one begins and one ends. Exactly. She looks like a, like wax museum, Kardashian trio Baby. She looks like the Bratz doll version of a Kardashian. Thank you. Thank you. I was in a wax museum and you rescued me. That is what she looks like. I no, don't no, that's a nicer that, but... thing to than comparing somebody to a Bratz doll. But that's kind of the look we're getting here, right? I mean, she looks drastically different. And kind of out of nowhere. Like, you, you're used to how she looks. Yeah. And there's always been tweaks and variations. Yeah. But she has... I mean, there has been. Her looks has have... She looked like Tori Spelling. She no longer looks like Tori Spelling. No, that's wild. Yeah, it is. It is a lot. So she now has this look and she is on a show that's I read something about being like a spinoff of uh, Ridiculousness, which I don't watch that show, but it's on MTV. But this is called Messiness on MTV. So Snooki is the host and Tori is one of the panelists. And the idea is like talking about people's messy behaviors. So which actually... Sounds like a great (laughs) idea, right? Um, And honestly, it could be the title of our show, too. I know. I was just like, yeah, it's kind of what we do a little bit. I mean, yeah. So should we sue her or maybe, you know, just maybe Snooki will have to fire Tori Tori eventually for not being able to, quote, conduct herself as a reasonable guest (laughs) on this show, end quote. But really, Rebecca, that's just the life of Tori Spelling. So scandalous. So notorious. So that's all notorious. I have. Wow. I I am really, I really liked that because I mean, 90210 is such a fixture for me and I have followed most of the major plot points of her life, but I wasn't sure if she was still married or not. So it's interesting yeah. that that's kind of hush hush. Right. Um, She's definitely selling stories. Oh yeah. <laughs> Today when I Googled, it talks about how she and the kids have COVID. A couple days mm. ago, Dean had COVID. There's even a picture. Actually, I'll show you a picture this is her, a very natural uh, picture, by the way. I didn't know really where to put this. This is I her remember out- this. Yeah, outside the attorney's outside. office. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, one, of the, one of the things, you know, the paparazzi zoomed in and it says something like custody on it. So it's like, okay, we see what you're doing here. You're yelling. Your car's right there and you couldn't get inside the car to yell at this person. 
you had to show the world you were screaming. So it's all sad, like where things are now, I think. Like, it just doesn't seem like, I don't know. I read something that was like, they're not together, but they can't even afford to leave each other, which Yikes. that I believe. Yeah. Uh, not in an ugly way. I just think like it's divorce is expensive. They have five kids. Sure. Sure. You see how that could be. Um, Two households where on? they live. Like, oh, gosh. Away. Yeah, it's one of those things like where we talked about with Rachel, you could tell where you kind of want to be like, well, get a job, people. And yet you kind of know they can't. I mean, first right. of all, Dean is an actor and like the life of most actors is like his and not right. the movie stars we know about. Like you work from job to job and you hope for when you have years where you have nothing, you right. have a great year. And then with her, like, she's not someone who can just go work somewhere. Like, nobody's going to hire her. So they do have to hustle and get creative and, you know, creative borderline. Yeah, yeah. And Mm. use their life as content. And that's tough. And they have kids. And I'm sure that those lines are, you know, I'm sure there's more boundaries there now as her kids are older, which is probably why we're seeing less. But, like, so then what? What do they have? So I know. And it is hard when your kids get older. You know this because your kids are older than mine. But it is a totally different dynamic. And what you want to share is totally different. And I can't imagine from that standpoint when it was all in our faces all the time. Yeah. Well, speaking of story, like, your kids' stories belong to them. And when they can start challenging you on that, you know, you kind of have to, well, if you're a good parent, you know, in my opinion, you listen to that and you respect them. Right, Um, yeah. I'm wondering, what is normal in a will? So Aaron Spelling died. If the wife is still alive, like, isn't it normal that she would have gotten most of the money? Does it just get earmarked? Like, okay, you're going to get the whole amount And then there's going to be like this many millions and this many millions when she dies. Like, could that have happened? And did he just like choose not to do that? Yeah, I think it was kind of, um, from what I understand, at least at the time, the oldest son had a trust fund. So like Tori's kids will be taken care of, I think, or at least one thing I read said that. But I don't know that she will necessarily get so much money. And I kind of think it depends on what her relationship is with Candy whenever that happens. But I also think like it sucks because she wasn't, she didn't grow up having a real balance or really even knowing how to balance it. I know. So you don't want to give her all this money because she's going to blow it. Or, you know, that's what it looks like. Maybe not true. Um, But also she never really had a chance to learn it. I I think she has learned some for sure because otherwise she'd, probably be in jail for all of, you know, the money that she hasn't been able to pay. But yeah, but I do challenge you on any given day, just Google Tori's name. I sure will. And see how many, I did it with Oprah. I've done other people like as we've led up to this episode and it's every day. She's got like at least four big articles that pop up immediately when you write, um, type her name in. Wow. I mean, that's a job just you know, managing all that. That's fascinating. Now she is an intriguing figure, no doubt. Interesting. So I'm out of my douchebag phase, but I don't know what this one is. (laughs) Yeah, I don't know what this one either. But there's a really small connection between your story and my next one. You're so good at that. That I didn't, well, I didn't plan it, but it just, um, one thing you said, I was like, oh, ding, ding, ding. So perfect. I love it. Before we talk about that, Rebecca, are you watching anything? What are you watching? I know you're watching something. You're I'm always watching, watching stuff, something. Right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So uh, I started a show with two of my family members that has been long recommended Ooh. by so many people. And it's one of those shows that you feel like the whole world's watching together and you're not for whatever mm. reason. And then it's it was like Shit's Creek for me because I came to that after it was over okay. and I did love it, but it took me two times to get into and I wasn't there with everybody. I guess I'm always late to the party, but it's one of those shows. And I okay. truly and sincerely can't remember if you've said you've watched this, not here, but just in our in general. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So forgive me because I don't remember. Um, but here's your clues. I think you're going to get it. Okay. Apple TV. Okay. Football. Ted Lasso. Soccer. Yeah. <laughs> I know you did better off Ted here. Uh-huh. Have we talked about Ted Lasso? No, we haven't. Mm-mm. Have you watched it? So I've watched a couple episodes and it feels like one I would love and I just haven't committed to it. Well, that's unusual for you. Yeah. I think you should go well, back to it. I had the it. Apple thing and then I didn't have it anymore. Like I got oh, it for okay, a week. Okay, that makes it, sense. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, for anyone who maybe like me knows the name Ted Lasso and is like, I'm aware of this show called right. Ted Lasso, but I have no idea. Let me just 
Read you the blurb. If you Google it, it will say small time American football coach Ted Lasso is hired to coach a professional football club in England, despite having no experience coaching football. Now, I mean, I revealed earlier my knowledge of football is (laughs) scant. Um, (laughs) And the show is honestly just about European football, which is soccer. And my family is like big soccer people. Oh, yeah. So I've been watching it with my youngest and my husband, and it's been so much fun. But I think it is just so well written. So funny. Actually, I should give a shout out to a listener and friend, Kara, who's really been like, you have to watch this. You have to watch this. You have to watch this. And I finally did. So thank you to her. Um, But Jason's Dacus, mm-hmm. I always feel like I'm saying it wrong, is just fantastic. The whole cast is great. It's funny. It's heartfelt. Something big is going to happen because I remember on Twitter when the show, like the finale came right. and everybody was talking about something, but I purposely kind of didn't delve into it. So I feel like there's going to be something huge, but it, it's just been just a really fun watch. And we oh, watched it during that. the holiday season. So I'm like in season two. Oh, nice. Okay. And yeah. is it three seasons now or it's just it's in two, or- right? No, oh, okay. it's either there's a third. I think the third is coming. Okay. I think I, I'm pretty sure. And I'm like into season two. So I think I need to yeah. cancel a different subscription and just commit to that because I just have too many. I know. Oh, me too. I need to look at all of them and really make make some hard decisions. Right. <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah, I think the season three is, is the next one coming. So okay. I don't know. It's not too late to hop in. I'm just loving it. Oh, good. I will definitely, I will definitely do that because that's one that I've kind of wanted to. But same thing, I didn't start when everybody else did, and I was like, "Eh, I know sometimes the momentum's not there or something. But yeah, go back to it. It's really good. Yeah. Um, What are you watching? Some clues. Okay, I'm excited. Okay, my clues are movie, movie, comedy, ish. Tony Hale. Mm, I like Tony Hale. I love him. I'm not up on movies and what people are in right now. Do you, can I have one more hint? Um, it's on Amazon. Oh, wait. Elizabeth Banks would be a clue. Oh, okay. Is it new? Uh, 2020, late tw- 2020. Um, a Breakfast Cereal is part of the title. Okay. I don't know. Now it's just getting too specific and I won't know. Oh. Eat Wheaties. I don't This No, I don't know this. Okay, I follow Tony Hale on Twitter. I just have like such a love he's, for him. Yeah, he's great. He's the best. And so I saw him, you know, promoting this. And it's the first movie I can think of or where he's the lead. So I was very yeah. interested. I just, I don't know. I'm fascinated by him. He just seems like the nicest man. So the blurb for this, this is on uh, Prime. I found it on Prime. Uh, Sid Straw, Tony Hale, leads a dull life until he accidentally stalks famous college friend, Elizabeth Banks on social media with each failed attempt to prove he knows her. He rediscovers more of himself in the true meaning of friendship. Okay. That's a little cheesy there at the end, but basically he is going to have his college reunion. And he's like, by the way, did you guys know that I went to college with Elizabeth Banks? And people are like, okay, sure. He has like one picture of them kind of in the same thing. And he's like, she used to say this phrase, something about eating Wheaties, whatever. He takes on social media. He's never been on social media. He gets on Facebook and he's writing on Elizabeth Banks' page like, hey, Elizabeth, you know, it's your friend from college, blah, 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 on the wall. So it becomes viral. He's just writing what he thinks is a personal message to her because he's never been on social oh. media. Oh, so no. it's like something like that. It's like this sweet, yeah. innocent person. Yeah. And it's confused with him being like crazy and, you know, stalker and all this stuff. It has so much heart to it and it's just so cute and endearing and like the ending is very like it's like the undoing as far as like it's very predictable like Mm -hmm. you know what's going to happen at the end but unlike the undoing you are happy so therefore yeah yeah it's it's very sweet it's cute it's funny i just like parts of it are super funny but he's very awkward and i just love i don't know i loved it and it's one you don't hear a lot about it's very clean like i might have heard one bad word. I don't even remember that. As wow. far as like, I was going to watch it with my daughter because I'm like, there's really not much that comes up in this. Yeah. Um, but oh, that's I so loved fun. It. And I like Elizabeth Banks and the two of them together seems so interesting. So I, I you, definitely like the sound of that. You don't see her. <laughs> oh, just I will kidding. Say. Okay. You'll see so pictures that's like, of her. <laughs> oh, she's not in it. She's not in it. Technically. But she, yeah. Yeah. I see. Oh, that's 
interesting though. That's it really is. funny. Like, okay. Using her name for it, but it's mm-hmm. very, yeah, I love it. It's like his family dynamics. He's date. I don't know. Just like you, you're rooting for him the whole time. Yeah. And just like really love him. This mm-hmm. actually sounds like Ted Lasso to me, like thematically, like it's rooting for Ted Lasso. He's like a fish out of water. And I know I read the blurb, but like you reminded me of just some color that I failed sure, to sure. mention, mm-hmm. but like, so he goes to coach soccer in England. He gets hired, which right. is kind of, you're like, well, why if he's a football coach from America, but you find out it's because the woman running the team who owns this premier league team, her ex-husband has um, left the league and she's running it and it's his favorite team. So she basically is doing anything she can to have this team fail and lose. Oh, okay. So she hires Ted Lasso to po- totally like ruin everything and bring the team down but people kind of love him because he's so he has so much heart and he charisma and like he, yeah exactly and so comedy ensues so also, anyway we got similar. a couple of mustache dudes going on in our I mean there's definitely themes yeah like I like I feel like these men. are these are nice um, complimentary recommendations they really are even the colors are complimentary I, here we really wow having a, having a moment it's like we oh. do this I know. <laughs> Next week, it'll be back to like young cults, uh, you know, just <laughs> terrible violence. Yeah. Murder. But you dark, know. dark doom and gloom. Like, Very speaking dark. of which, you ready for your clues? <laughs> oh, can't wait. No, just a little. Um, these were really hard to come up with because um, they were either going to be like on the nose or so obscure. And I feel mm-hmm. like mine are always a little too weird. So here they are. You might get it. I'm excited. Okay, three clues. Clue number one, TV royalty. Okay. Cult, which is the clue. <laughs> which, cl- okay. Cult. Okay. And Yugoslavia. Any ideas? Not even. Good. Kind of good. One. No. Okay. okay, good. Good. Oh, I'm so excited for this one. Okay, yeah, I don't have any idea whatsoever. Hmm. Okay, good. No, Great. I'm excited though. Yugoslavia. Yeah, me too. I, I don't even know how to spell it. I hardly know you. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> that was very cute. Um, well, I'm really excited to delve in a little deeper. I've just got the the peripheral story down. Um, just landed on it yesterday. Perfect. You know it's, how it goes. It's what we do. It's just in the nick of time. Yeah. Yeah. But um, yeah. So let's do this again. Sounds good. Let's do that. Yeah. Okay. Um, you can find Rebecca every Wednesday on her show Dialogue D I E hyphen A-L-O-G-U-E. Um, and Rebecca's big into cults in the nicest way. So if you're just here because you've heard us talk about cults on social media, Rebecca is your guide and you will find a million episodes about cults. And I'm saying that as a compliment, much like you complimented <laughs> me for what, reading all of the Tori Spelling's book. Same thing. Oh my gosh, truly, it, it, it is. Let's be real. Um, yes, and you can catch Melissa every Tuesday on her other podcast, Moms and Murder. And we thank you so much for listening. Please follow us on social media at Criminality Show. We do our best to, you know, be there and answer and chat with you guys. We love meeting you and, you know, hearing where you're listening from. I know we have the nicest listeners. Um, So find us there. And you can also watch us on YouTube and you can get like you can watch these clips and see these crazy backgrounds that we surprise each other with. It's a lot of fun. It is. Okay. (laughs) I sound like Bob (laughs) Robert Durst. (laughs) Bye bye. Bye bye. Have a great couple weeks, everyone. And when we come back, we'll be so close to our two-year anniversary. We were just talking about that. February, we started. And we'll be right on the end of it. Wow. What did I say? One year. Two. (laughs) (laughs) I know it was like forever. (laughs) But we did not, we did not like hop in a future time machine. Maybe. All right. I mean, the, the, the night is young. Yeah, there you go. We'll see you guys back in two weeks. Bye.